Story time now. When I began writing this story, I had in mind one of the greatest literary works ever created, uh, Dante's uh, Divine Comedy. I, I wanted to pay tribute to Dante. So the earliest drafts of this piece began with an allegory and was organized into canticles and cantos. And as often happens, things changed as I went along. <laughs> First, the allegory was dropped. And then in later iterations, the canticles were dropped too. And then in the, in the penultimate draft, on the advice of my editor, uh, who, who thought we should make the whole thing more accessible, <laughs> in other words, bring it down to the lowest common denominator, dumb it down, if you will. Uh, the, the cantos became chapters. And I, I must, I'll be honest, I chafed at that a bit, but I, uh, I went along with it. But because we are in this great literary town today, I thought I would reintroduce the sophistication of those early versions. Uh, I, I thought if anyone was up to it, Chicago was. And so in an act of editorial rebellion and uh, with the greatest respect to Dante Alighieri, I present The Checkout, <laughs> Canto One, <laughs> Cosmology. <laughs> now one could say that entering a supermarket is akin to entering this life, a birth of sorts, a small and symbolic one to be sure, but a birth nevertheless. For what is a supermarket if not a world of allegory? The aisles at the beginning representing the days of our youth, teeming as they do with life-affirming things, the apples and pears of our childhood beguiling and beckoning us to come along, come along, deeper and deeper to where danger dwells, <laughs> into the depths of the place, into the middle aisles, the middle age of our life, where temptation lurks to lead the weak among us astray. What is wandering through a grocery store if not an allegorical wandering through this world, a voyage which begins in the garden of youth, navigates through the thrill of snack foods, <laughs> trudges through the disappointment of boxed cereal, <laughs> and ends in the chilly realm of the freezers. <laughs> and we get there. When we're done, our shopping finished, our allegorical life over, where do we go? We turn our baskets toward the aptly named checkout counter. <laughs> but first we head for the chasm that separates the shopping from the paying, the hallway that bisects the store the way the Acheron River separates life on this earth from the underworld. We stand beside our grocery cart like it was Karen's boat. We survey what lies ahead. A lineup, that's what lies ahead. It is time for us to pay the piper, time to atone for the sins of our life, time for the purgatory of the cash register so we can ascend to the paradise of the home-cooked meal. Though this is where the metaphor gets a little muddled. Because really, as anyone who has been on this little journey can tell you, the checkout line may represent purgatory, but so often it feels more like hell. <laughs> End of the first canto. <laughs> Beginning of canto two, life. So Dave was at the grocery store for the second day in a row. He and Morley were having guests for dinner and when he went to the store on Thursday, he forgot to get the one thing that he actually went to the store to get. <laughs> he forgot the cream cheese for Morley's much-loved crab dip. He came home and unloaded the stuff he had bought, and he said, you're right, I'm sorry, I'll go back tomorrow. And then he made a promise. He would have the cream cheese in her hands so she had more than enough time his words, not mine. <laughs> More than enough time to make the dip before the first guest arrived. He would leave work early. He'd be home by five. I promise, he said. 
So why then on his second trip in 24 hours, the one that we are about to join, why had he found it necessary to get a cart and wander up and down every aisle? <laughs> because he's an idiot. <laughs> his words, not mine. And they may well be part of the truth, but they are not the whole truth. Truth is, he got the cart because he is human. And the moment he entered the store, he was confronted with temptation. The temptation to shop. And we all know the best way to get rid of temptation. Best way to get rid of temptation is to give in to it. <laughs> the problem was, he had on this afternoon actually arrived with time to spare. He thought time was on his side. So he got a cart and he pushed it through the cornucopia of fruits and vegetables, around the corner of bakery, past the ice of fish, the brown paper of meat, up canned goods, down cereals, through drinks and past frozen foods, and look at all the stuff he found they needed. <laughs> the little wedge of blue cheese, the set moncel, the frozen pizza, deep dish, of course. <laughs> Now, he knew there were people who could do what he hadn't done. Efficient people. People who could stay on task, morally, for instance. These people would have headed right for the cheese and then the checkout, but that was just foolishness as far as Dave was concerned. He glanced at his watch. Yowzers! He was going to be late. End of Canto 2. Canto 3, crossing into hell. <laughs> How late was the question? How late is what is hanging in the balance as we join him? Dave glanced at his watch again. Okay, really late. He had lost complete track of time. And so he sped up. He would have to skip the pleasures of yogurts and domestic cheese. Wait, the cream cheese. He left his cart, ran back, scooped up the little silver package of cream cheese the way he should have almost an hour ago. He threw it in his basket, and he made for the front of the store. That, my friends, was a close call. He nearly forgot it for the second day in a row. And so he rolled his half-full, oh, all right, virtually full basket into the open. He surveyed the area. There was a line at every cache. Deep breath, take stock. The line to his left had four carts. The one to his right had three. The choice seemed obvious until you looked a little harder. Each of the three carts seemed fuller than each of the four. But he examined the carts more carefully. A cart can be full, but if it's full of toilet paper and laundry soap, It'll move faster than a cart of small cans and fresh vegetables. <laughs> and then there were the cashiers. The line with the four carts was being handled by a plump older woman wearing a tunic. The other line, the one with the three fuller carts, was being handled by a long-haired young man. The efficiency of experience or the energy of youth? <laughs> the fewer baskets? or the emptier ones. Of course, there was also self-checkout. <laughs> self-checkout is like an arcade game where you get to be the cashier. But would it be faster? Self-checkout was a head fake. A setup, a sucker punch, it always went wrong. <laughs> you always had to call the cashier over for a reset or a redo or a re-up. Dave knew he was an amateur. He needed professional help. <laughs> a man in a blue windbreaker appeared out of nowhere and without hesitating rolled right by him into the line with three carts. The guy had just stolen his place. 
Okay, he hadn't made up his mind. He hadn't committed, but it could have been his place. He glared at him. He'd keep his eye on Mr. Windbreaker and see how they compared. This was a sporting event now, and his goal was to defeat Mr. Windbreaker. And look, there's a line at the far end with no one in it. Dave backed his car and swiveled. So long, sucker. He was about to bury Mr. Windbreaker. He spotted the sign when he got there. <laughs> One to 12 items. He looked at his cart. It was essentially full. The woman at the cash was watching him. He flashed her his most winsome grin. She grinned back and then shook her head slowly. Not in a million years. He had to go back to the beginning. In the brief moment he had been away, the two lines had both lengthened. The three was now five. If he joined it, he'd be two spots behind Mr. Windbreaker. The four was a five too. But wait, it appeared they were opening a new line and there was an older gentleman heading toward it already. The old guy's basket was stuffed. He had to get there ahead of him. <laughs> but to appear ethical, to appear decent, he had to create the impression that he hadn't seen him. <laughs> they collided at the entrance of the cache. <laughs> End of Canto 3. <laughs> Canto 4. Hell. <laughs> there was nothing left but to line up meekly behind the old guy. And now there was nothing left to do but to watch in despair. The old guy had brought out a grocery flyer. <laughs> and he had fallen into deep discussion with the cashier, pointing at the flyer and then at an item on the conveyor. The cashier was shaking her head. The old guy was holding the item up now. The cashier was still shaking her head. And Dave was growing frantic. The old guy ever so slowly folded the flyer and returned it to his pocket. In its place, he pulled out a roll of bills. He began peeling bills off the roll, one by one. Dave sighed and looked skyward. At least he would be done soon. But he wasn't. <laughs> he put the bills away and was patting his pocket looking for something else. He was looking for his change pouch. He was going to pay an exact change. <laughs> Dave felt his heart accelerating. The old guy was squinting at the computer screen. He was opening the change pouch and he was picking out coins one after another, examining each coin before he handed it over. In the name of God, cried Dave. Will somebody please help him? I beg your pardon, said the lady behind him. I'm going to shoot myself, said Dave. Canto 5. <laughs> Hell hath many rings. <laughs> the cashier had taken the change pouch from the old man and was counting his coins for him. The old man was watching carefully. To distract himself from flinging his credit card down on the counter and shouting, let me pay, <laughs> Dave turned to the woman behind him thinking, as he did, that at least he was no longer the last in line. I'm just going to run over and get some flowers, said Dave. Do you mind? <laughs> he was going to need all the help he could muster when he got home. The woman shook her head. She didn't mind at all. He jogged over to the flower display. He grabbed a bouquet of yellow tulips, and he ran back. He got halfway there and stopped abruptly. His cart was floating like a lonely little island all by itself. The woman had moved in front of him. She was unloading her groceries onto the belt. I thought you weren't coming back, she said. And now 
She was separating her groceries into three separate orders, <laughs> carefully placing bars between each one. Dave could do nothing but stand and watch. She was paying for each order a different way. A debit card for the first. Oh no, she was writing a check for the second. It was as if the line had magically produced two extra people. Finally, they started on her last order. She had 12 cans of tuna. The cashier was ringing them through, one can after another. Dave looked at his watch. Everything inside of him told him to keep his mouth shut. But he couldn't keep his mouth shut. He leaned forward and said, may I make a suggestion? Both the cashier and the lady turned and glared at him. They're all the same, said Dave. If you punch it in once and then times 12, it'll go much faster. <laughs> I need to do it this way for inventory control, said the cashier. But if you have any other helpful ideas, just let me know. And she turned back to the order. But at half the speed, she was moving before his helpful suggestion. He waited. As he waited, he watched Mr. Windbreaker wheel his checked out cart out of the store. Canto six, despair. It was his turn. And now the cashier was holding his tulips. Do you know how much these are, she said. <laughs> They're $4.99, said Dave. There's no barcode, said the cashier. They're $4.99, said Dave. Adele, she called to the cashier one row over. How much are the tulips? They're $7.99, said Adele. Dave said, do you want me to run back and get a different bunch? The cashier smiled at him and shook her head. She reached under the counter and pulled out a phone. No, said Dave, don't do that. <laughs> but she did. She uttered the dreaded words, price check. <laughs> and then she reached over and put a closed sign on her cash. She smiled at Dave. Virgil will only be a minute, she said. <laughs> Just charge me the $7.99, said Dave. This isn't a bazaar, said the cashier. <laughs> you aren't allowed to bargain here. Dave glanced at his watch. Four minutes, four and a half, five. Virgil came back. The tulips are $4.99, said Virgil. <laughs> Aren't you glad I didn't charge you the $7.99, said the cashier. Dave didn't hear her. Dave was standing at the end of the counter, wildly throwing things into bags. He threw his debit card into the terminal and punched in his pin. He got it right on the fourth try. <laughs> he grabbed his bags and ran, racing for the exit, the bags swinging in one hand, the car keys out and ready in the other. He had no hope, of course. He was so late, it didn't matter. But he couldn't help himself. He was late. All he could do was hurry. Sadly, as they say, speed kills. <laughs> Canto seven. Divine comedy. Back at the cash register, Virgil had stayed to help bag groceries for the next customer in line. That guy, he says, he's talking about Dave. What? Says the cashier. He forgot a bag. <laughs> he's not coming back, says the cashier. I don't think so, says Virgil. I'll reshell the stuff. <laughs> what is there, said the cashier. 
Uh, I'll mark it down in case he comes back. Oh, nothing important, said Virgil. Three apples, some farmer sausage, and a pack of cream cheese. <laughs> Canto, the last. <laughs> Death comes in many forms. <laughs> we can die young and we can die old. We can drop dead of fear or we can topple over in embarrassment. We can die with our boots on or off. Some people stand on stage and are said to die. Some sit in an audience and say, they're dying too. <laughs> when Dave got home, he swore he had the cream cheese in the bags. I swear, he said. Not that it mattered. The low beers were already there. It was way too late for crab dip. Honest to God, said Dave, it was there, I had it. It was just a small death. And coward or hero, we all have our share. Some would say the small deaths add up, that they take their toll. But there are more important things than crab dip and better ways of dying. We can laugh ourselves to death. We can also laugh ourselves silly. Sometimes all we can do is laugh. <laughs>